Hi there, I'm Peter Millard, and in this week's 10 Minute Workshop, we're finally going to take a look at changing the fence on that bandsaw. That's coming up next. So I'm just on the small camera for a second, just to show you what's going on here. I'm in the middle of a, a whole load of chaos, basically. Uh, in the other room in here, I've got some stuff, uh, painted stuff that's drying. Uh, back in the main studio, main studio, main workshop, uh, my bench of shame is covered in clutter. I'm having a big clear out. So all that stuff's uh, around there as well. I'm halfway in the middle of an install as well. Uh, the client doesn't want me there this morning because they're on a deadline, they're a writer and they're sort of hastily scribbling words to, to meet a deadline, so I can't get in there until this afternoon. Uh, and I thought it was about time, really, uh, that I sorted out this bandsaw. I had a, a question in the comments of the old bandsaw video, which is almost a year old, I have to say, uh, about how I got on with the fence. And I've got to admit, it's still in the box, so it's about time I got stuck into sorting that out. So yeah, it's not helped any by the amount of complete rubbish that's in here. I put a question out after the uh, blade tests that I did. Should I keep all these little birch ply offcuts or should I uh, get rid of them? Everybody said, no, I'll keep them, we use them for a project because now I've got them hanging around everywhere. So I've got to do something with those. This is the, uh, <laughs> the bandsaw fence. <sighs> Lovely. Um, and I need to dig out the bandsaw as well. Get some pieces everywhere. So a little Titan bandsaw, you may have seen this uh, in some previous videos. Uh, there's a whole playlist with all the bandsaw videos in it, uh, in the video description. Um, it's not the best bandsaw in the world, but it's cheap and cheerful. It's got a reasonable size throat for a bandsaw of this size and price. Uh, and it's done everything I've thrown at it for the last year or so. Uh, but it is it has been a year, so it's probably about time I had a bit of a bit of a clean up, a bit of a tidy up. The supplied blade is okay, but it could be better. I've got a couple of new ones. We'll try one of those in. The biggest headache I had with it was the fence. It is pretty woeful. Uh, now obviously, not having a fence on the bandsaw hasn't exactly held me up much in my use of the bandsaw. I don't use a fence that much. I mostly use it for freehand things, for small cuts, where a small, delicate blade like this is a better option than a big, spinny blade on the mitosaur or the Traxel. Uh, but it's about time we had a, a bit of a, a clean-up, a bit of a spruce-up. We'll get the blade changed, we'll get the fence put on it. I also wanted to take a look, I don't know if you, if you have seen the previous videos, uh, there was a slight niggle, there's a, a, a blade tensioner releasing thing uh, which never worked. I want to have a quick play with that to see if I can get that functioning. So that, to start with, we'll whip the covers off, give it a hoover out, uh, and then see if we're, anything we can do with that uh, blade tensioner release thing. Yeah, that could do with a bit of a clean out. back of the saw here, this is supposed to be a quick release blade tensioner thing, but it never did anything. And what I think is wrong with it, you can just see from the mechanism in here, as you bring the lever around, it just starts to engage a cam. It's just started to do something when this handle actually hits this knob. So I think this is out of whack by a certain amount. Now I've tried inside here, changing this little dingus around and it doesn't seem to make a, a scrap of difference how you turn it. I, I think the cam is actually on on the inside of that um, so I, I can't I can't get to it but what I can do and again I, you know, I don't blade change blades that often but what you can do is actually just stick a little sliver of wood in there a little bit of hardwood and that will actually release this enough to get the tension off the blade yeah or you just take the tension off the blade the usual way and retension it yourself it's hardly an onerous task but that will actually work so I've got a couple of new blades from Tough Saws uh, Ian at Tough Saws very generous with his time very knowledgeable hopefully they're the right size I've got a 10 tooth wrench which will also be metal 
and a little general replacement. Uh, six tooth ridge. Okay, is it just me or does that seem rather long? I don't think I've taken that much tension off the blade. Damn. Maybe. Well, it's got to be said. The gullet is right on the crown there. Guards are okay. Well, let's lock them back up, see if it runs. Tell you what, if I was changing blades more than once a year, I'd cut these flipping screws back. Just down a bit. So blade changed, cleaned up, all seem to be working well, that's the easiest blade change I've ever done by the way, uh, and certainly taking the tension off the blade just to put the new one in seemed to work extremely well, no fanning about with tracking or any of the other nasties, it seems to be cutting really nicely. Let's look at the fence and the, the, the fence I've got is a supplementary fence from Axminster, uh, very simple. Um, Runs on a little sort of rail that you have to bolt to the underside of your table, and then that just fits in there and rides along very simply. There's adjustment on it so we can uh, get it running absolutely square. But the, the big headache with this particular saw is the table itself. Now, the reason I kept this one rather than any of the others was because it had a reasonable aluminium table with a mitre slot in it. Unfortunately, the way they've shaped it, it means that you can't just bolt the supplementary fence on there. You've actually got to do something else. And with a little bit of fiddling, a little bit of jiggery pokery, I've discovered that this is actually 16 mil is, is just about perfect. Uh, I've got some 15 mil birch ply, and I'm just going to cut some little pieces to go in there. I'm going to glue them in with a little one mil packer and that will bring everything down just enough to give ourselves a nice steady solid platform that I can then drill through and put a couple of little uh, machine screws through those and a bolt to keep it all together. <laughs> 